you very much. And, and Greg, uh, well said. Uh, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's good to dovetail of what he said. I think um, I'll talk about dealing with adversity. Um, I played at North Carolina, as you can see in the background. I also was the head coach at North Carolina. I got fired at North Carolina. I was the head coach at SMU. I got fired at SMU. Um, I think when you sign up to, <laughs> to coach, um, you sign up to get fired. And athletics is a very tricky thing. It's very fleeting. Uh, it's very fragile. Um, but we've discovered here is that life is fragile. Um, so I think that the biggest thing and, and touching on what Greg said is a frame of mind. Your frame of mind um, has to be positive. Um, I think to me, it's all about putting things in perspective. When I would coach and we would go through a tough stretch and maybe lose some games, um, I always tell people it could be worse. Um, you know, to my players, I said, you could be in Afghanistan uh, as a soldier. Um, you know, now you could be in the hospital uh, suffering with COVID-19. Uh, it can always be worse. And I look back at the other generations that had to deal with World War II, uh, the Great Depression. Um, you know, they would laugh at this. Like, they, they, they would laugh at this. This is baby stuff. So um, we can get through this. Um, look at the positives that come through this. I think that we get to spend more time with our families. We get to have a little bit more of a simpler life. Um, so I'm a glass half full kind of guy. And, and that's what I encourage everyone to do. Um, I run a, a coaching practice, the Doherty coaching practice, where I do some executive coaching. Um, I talk to give keynote speeches. Um, to me, it's about rebounding, rebounding from failure, because we're all going to deal with failure and adversity. Um, and I think through tough times, uh, I like to use Nelson Mandela's quote where he says, I never lose. I either win or I learn. So this is a great opportunity to learn and, and get better. Um, so when I talk to the, lead, the leaders on this call, the owners um, and the coaches, I think there are three things that leaders need to do in a time of adversity is one, you got to tell the truth. You know, don't sugarcoat it for your people because nobody likes to be BS. Number two, develop a well thought out plan with key advisors. You know, don't just throw something against the wall and say that's a plan. A well thought out plan with intention, strategic, that you then, third thing, is communicate it with great clarity and leave room for hope. Because at the end of the day, people want to know that they have hope for a brighter future. And then coaches, I think it's important that the coaches stay connected with your athletes. Uh, now's, now's as good a time as ever because you have tools like Zoom and FaceTime. 50% uh, of communication is body language and tone. And that's hard to get across in a text message. So if you can get in front of your team as a group and individually via video conferencing, that's ideal. I would also hold team meetings because the last thing you want your do, to do is let your players get out of shape because then all of a sudden they come back and they're going to rush back into playing and someone's going to get hurt. So I would hold them accountable in these meetings. Make them get up. We're going to have a staff meeting. We're going to have a team meeting at 9 o'clock in the morning on Zoom, you know, just like you would do if they were playing on your team uh, and you were able to meet with them in person. Um, and then uh, the athletes, uh, as I touched on, you got to stay in shape. Uh, I think the athletes and the coaches both need to increase their network. There's a lot of great webinars for coaches. So while you're going through this, it's an opportunity to learn and grow and develop your network because it's a relation. Every business is a relationship business and it's who you know is as important as what you know and sometimes more important. So athletes, again, increase your network. You know, as an athlete, you always get to be in the front of the line. Greg's son, I'm sure he didn't wait on many reservations in Tuscaloosa if he wanted to go into a restaurant. I know I didn't when I played at North Carolina. But all of a sudden, that shine goes away quickly. 
And if you're not playing in the NFL or the NBA, that shine goes away. And you've got to be in position to add value. What value can you add to an employer? Use the time as an athlete to network with the owners, with corporate sponsors. And that comes with a good presentation. I asked a lot of my players back when Michael Vick got arrested with the dog incident. I said to them, what did you notice about Michael Vick when he was going to his courtroom? And it was two things. One, he didn't have his posse with him. I said, you're right. His boys weren't with him. Because when you hit adversity, victory has many fathers. Defeat is an orphan. That's John F. Kennedy's quote. So when you're down, you're going to be, you're going to find out who your true friends are. The other thing I said, what did you notice? They said he cut his braids and he wore a suit. And I said, why? And they said, because he wanted to make a good impression. I said, well, don't you want to make a good impression every day? So present yourself in a professional manner. And then somebody like people on this call might be more willing to help a young athlete, if they feel that they have a chance to add value to their company or somebody else's company. And then education. Education is available all, all over the place now, whether it be a community college, online, learn, learn something. I mean, find a mentor, find somebody on this call that can help educate you about something you like, whether it be real estate, um, you know, tax, business, cars, whatever the industry is, learn and grow. And then lastly, and I take this lesson from my family, my parents, you know, they were, they were very prudent. They didn't make a lot of money, but they live within their means. And I think that's a big lesson for people is living within your means. We all want to look at Twitter and social media and see big houses and big cars and big watches. And then we go ahead and buy it on a credit card and then you're screwed. Live within your means, stay in your lane. The comparison games are the work of the devil. I believe that we all get caught up in it because we're all competitors and are all wired to beat the guy next to us. So we want to have the nicer car, the nicer house, but that's, that gets you in trouble. Lastly, like, like Greg said, we're all competitors. What would you do if you're down five with five minutes to go in a game? What are you going to do? You're going to dig in and, and compete. That's what you got to do right now.